What up guys, we are here with Tim. He is the Associate AD of Media Relations with Green Valley State University. He's gonna give us a little tour and show us around the facility today. All right, let's go. Um, this is the Champions Lounge here, lobby. Um, this is where we house the national championship, the four national championship trophies for football, along with the Harlan Hill Award, Kurt Ames won in 2002. Uh, but yeah, we keep all of our, our trophies down here. Uh, you know, Laker football uh, is the winningest Division II school in the country in terms of winning percentage. Uh, and that, that's something we take a lot of pride in. Uh, this is obviously named, named the Kelly Family Champions Lobby. Brian Kelly, former head coach here, who's now head coach at LSU. Brian really got things rolling in uh, 2001. Uh, we, we were really, we, we'd always been really good. I mean, 8-3, and 9-2, gone to the playoffs, 10-2. Uh, but hadn't really got over the hump. Well, in 2001, we kind of got over the hump with a really special class of football players, Kurt Ains, David Kirkus, Reggie Spearman, Brent Lesniak. Um, and that, that group kind of got us to the national championship game. Kurt Ains hurt his knee out here in the first playoff game, or we, we were no doubt going to win that national championship. That was probably one of the greatest teams ever in Division II football. Uh, he got hurt. We got beat in the championship game in 2001. And then went back to the championship game with Kurt as quarterback in 2002 and, and won the national championship and then we won it in 2002 and 2003 and then and 2005 and 2006. So four out of five years obviously you know very impressive and uh, um, it, it, the story tradition really really began before that but that kind of spurned us on to a national stage. Mm -hmm. Quite the entrance to see all of the titles yeah, it laid is. out it is. right here for it everyone. It is. You know, and our, our kids are very lucky to, to have this uh, building. Those are just uh, some of the uniforms that, that we ha have on display here. Uh, yeah, our student athletes, uh, our football student athletes are extremely fortunate to have this building. And, and this was all uh, donated through alumni uh, uh, fundraising. So you can see uh, some of the former uh, football players have gone on to the NFL here. Uh, David Kirkus, um, Colin Finnerty was a three-time national champion quarterback. Uh, and uh, really his career record as a quarterback in Grand Valley, he was 53 and uh, five. So that's a pretty impressive record as a starting quarterback to, uh, and again, he was part of three national championships. Um, Brandon Carr uh, played in the NFL for 13 years, never missed a game. Uh, Matt Judon currently playing for the New England Patriots. Uh, Nick Kaiser most recently was our Super Bowl alum. He played for the Patriots, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the Chiefs and he was part of the uh, uh, Super Bowl team in 2020, I think. Yeah. 20, yeah, 20. So obviously a lot of, a, a lot of tradition. Um, you know, and all these, the great thing about this is that these guys give back. Yeah. And they come back all the time. They come back to talk to the team. Um, Matt Judon comes back every year to talk to the guys uh, before camp. And, um, you know, it really means a lot keeping these guys involved. And, and, and they really do a great job with helping, you know, continue to build the uh, tradition of Laker football. Really speaks to the culture that you all have built here. You know, that, you know your players want to keep it, coming back and giving back. It really does. And, uh, and, and our current players, really, they, they respect the history. They really do. We talk to them about what went on here and, and the success that we've had. I mean, this is not just something in the last few years. I mean, Laker football has been successful throughout the entire, we're going to our 52nd season of Laker football. And it's really been, you know, after, after the initial start, um, you know, we have a winning percentage of, of over 80% in terms of, of, of winning our games. So, uh, yeah, we take a lot of pride in this, and these guys give back, and it's great. Josh Burke played in the CFL for, for 13 years. He's being inducted into our Athletic Hall of Fame this upcoming year. Those are our trophies there. Those are the, 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 the meaningful trophies, the Anchor Bone uh, Cup, which is the trophy, traveling trophy between us and Fair State, and then the wooden shoe trophy between Grand Valley State and uh, – Wayne State, and wooden shoes, um, Holland is known for the Dutch, mm -hmm. and I have no idea why Wayne State and Grand Valley State play in the, play for Dutch shoes, but they, uh, the um, powers to be at that point wanted a east side versus west side kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, rivalry game, mm -hmm. and they chose a couple of wood shoes. I love a good, unique rivalry yeah, game trophy. I mean, the weirder, the yeah, better. Yeah, the weirder, the better, so. Um, yeah, we, we like to keep that, that filled. President Lubbers, um, he was the president, the first president of Grand Valley State University, and he loved football. He, and I mean, he loved football. Yeah. Like, third and 
what are we doing running the ball in third and six? He would come into the press box and say, what's going on? That's my type of guy. I mean, and um, so he really cared about it. And I, you know that the, the president cares about football when he's still president and the, name, and, the, and the stadium is named after him. So it didn't, we, they didn't wait till after he was done. No, he's like, I want this now. Yeah, I want, <laughs> I, I want to be known as, uh, I want Lubber State to be, uh, you know, part of, of my, my legacy before I'm retired. So uh, it means a lot to him. He still comes to games. Um, he was president for over 30 years at Grand Valley State, which is unheard of in terms yeah. of presidency uh, for university presidents. We're going into the, uh, lock, the Randy Damster locker room. Um, uh, we have 120 lockers in here. Uh, again, this is, um, you know, you talk to the student athletes about the camaraderie. Well, the locker room is where they, they build that camaraderie. And so we felt it was, you know, meaningful to have all the lockers and a tight closed in, in spot, you know, and um, in, in today's standards, I mean, I'm not sure if our locker room is that, you know, unbelievable, but, um, you know, everything, they have everything that they need in here. And, um, you know, they can play games and they can have the couches to relax during camp, before and after practice. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, in terms of, of Division II facilities, we, you know, we obviously think that this is uh, one of the nicer facilities in the country. I think and it's one of the nicer facilities for even some D1 schools. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Um, you know, uh, we take a lot of pride in our game day atmosphere at Grand Valley. Uh, um, again, the, you know, when your stadium seats 10,440 and the top 10 uh, single game attendance marks, our 15,985 being the, the lowest mark, 17,007 be, being the, uh, the, the most in, in stadium history. Uh, we take a lot of pride in that. And we, the, the game day atmosphere at Grand Valley for Division II is unbelievable. And I would even say, you know, the Mid-American Conference and schools like that, this really is a neat game day atmosphere. The students get into it. They fill the, state, the, the south bleachers and the north end zone uh, seating um, an hour before game time. We, uh, we kind of, uh, the entrance is kind of a, a variation of Virginia Tech's Enter Sandman, and um, I, I guess the, the biggest form of flattery is by stealing some other people, and <laughs> so we stole a few things there. But uh, it's a great environment. We have the 38th largest video board in the country, regardless of uh, school, um, and we do a lot with that video board in terms of creating a great game day environment. As you can see, uh, this is the offensive line room. And, you know, in terms of the athletes have, a, you know, big enough space where they can meet. It's not like little closets and things like that. Right. So when we built the Hosford Center, it was important that we give them a, a, a space where they can be comfortable and, and still get the job done. But again, it, it's keeping to the roots of kind of the, you know, it's, it's not too lavish or anything mm -hmm. like that. And, and, and they understand, like, where everything comes from. Um, and, we, and we try to feature the individuals that have been all Americans and, and Go on to play professional football, but also those guys that give, that give back. Yeah. Um, that really were a huge part of raising money and, and building this facility. So it was, uh, we, we featured them on the walls. Uh, so this is just another uh, Dave Kirkus, Eric Fowler. Um, they both played in the NFL. And uh, again, great representatives of, of Grand Valley State University. And, and what they give back to this. I like the stats up on the wall for all conference. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, and, you yeah. Know, giving them yep, something exactly. to, yeah. to know what they're and, a part and, of. And we talk about the All Americans, All Conference, and in, in, in the NFL, the, the professional players. Because at the end of the day, there's still individuals here that want to play at that level. And, and to know that, okay, every NFL team is going to come through here yep. um, and, and view the film. And they'll be at, well, have every NFL team practices in, in fall camp. Um, and our, our players and you know, are, are viewed no differently than Michigan State or, or Michigan. I mean, the, the scouts are coming to find them. And especially in today's world, you know, really there is, it, it's, it's hard to say that uh, you can't be found with, you, you know, with all the avenues today of uh, the internet. And they don't care where you're yeah, at. They don't, they don't really care where you, as long as you can produce for them on the field, uh, that's all that really matters. This is one half of the team room. It's broken down into, for team meetings, they'll pull that partition back and then we have 120 chairs in here, and we'll have our team meetings in here. Um, again, Brandon Carr on the, is featured on this side. Matt Judon is on, on the other side. And then for, so for the, they'll pull the partition back for team meetings and have an open space. And then, but after that, they'll break it down, and like the DBs will meet in here. The linebackers will meet in the, in the other room. Plenty of meeting space. Yeah, no shortage of meeting space here. 
great view of the stadium. Yeah, it is. It, it really is a neat view. Um, the student section, that's all students down there at the south end. Like, like I said before, that'll be filled up an hour before the game. And then the overflow, they come to fill up this hill, and this hill will be filled up with the overflow. Yeah, I can imagine um, that gets pretty full pretty quickly during yeah, a big game. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. I mean, um, you know, and the future plans are to, you know, tear down the, that press box, build like a three-level press box there with, with suites. We have six suites available on each side, the, and then the president's box, and then the, obviously the, the press box. And future plans are to bring that uh, student section, the same seating, down all the way to the goal line, get rid of that hill, and build another uh, building for the opponents and and bathrooms and, and uh, concessions over there. Nice. There's the uh, video board, which when we go down there, we can see it. But again, that's kind of a drawing card for the sta whole stadium. It kind of just closes it in. Yeah. And we're, we're able to put anything we want up there, and it, just to create that home field advantage uh, with with noise and the students love being on the video board. So we, uh, all of our games on, on flow, we have a five, five camera set up. Um, so we do a good job of featuring the, stu the, the students and they love being on that, on that video board during timeouts and, mm -hmm. and singing the songs in between, uh, you know, possessions and things like that. Again, this is the hallway down to the coaches' offices uh, featuring our national championships. So like, this is the defensive staff room. So they'll meet as a staff in there and they, so no one really has their own office per right. se. Everybody talks on cell phones anyways today, so it doesn't really matter. No one need, needs their own office. Prevents the screaming down the yeah, hall right. type of thing. Yeah, right. You know, and the, like the offensive staff will meet in here. And, but yet, the, like, the, this is the quarterback's meeting room, and that's the running back's meeting room. When they break, break off into uh, positional meetings. Again, more, sign, more things here. Just talking about the 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Uh, talking about the tradition and the players that uh, went on to earn honors and, and wins. Big wins. Brian Kelly's first game as head coach. Uh, they they won at North Dakota State, beat the Bison 21-17 at North, at North Dakota State. So you know we just talk about different things, so our players understand the history, and it, it's important for them to uh, leave their their legacy. Down here, this is what's called the bullpen. So these are all the GAs and video guys, and they have their own little area. I had to make them a graphic, so. But they haven't put it up yet. I'm a little. I'm not happy about that. You have the small one entrance yeah. to the bullpen. <laughs> yeah, that's not. That's not the graphic we made for them. And, and in terms of the video system, we have what, or you know, it, as soon as practice is over, everything's uploaded, and then it, it's distributed to all the computers in, in the building, and so the, the different position groups can get in as soon as practice is over and, and watch their film. No excuse not no, to watch no, all your film. No, no, no excuse not to watch film. <laughs> And, you know, it takes a lot of hard work of the, the kids that are doing it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the GAs and the, the, the video team, you know, they do all the, kind of, all the dirty work and uh, all the stuff that nobody knows about. The team behind the team. Yeah, exactly. And they do an unbelievable job, and we've, we've moved those, those individuals on to NFL jobs. Virtually anyth anybody that comes through here works in the video department um, and equipment. Uh, uh, they've really done, and done great things in, at e either the Division One level or the NFL. Anchor up for the kind of the the saying for the the team, and as they as they come out. So this is the run out. This is the game yes. day view. Yep, this is the run out. There'll be a there'll be an inflatable right there in the corner, a big Laker inflatable, and then the screen will go black, and then they'll start the entrance video while the guys are in the corner here and on the video board is the uh, video introduction. And then the band is out there. And once that stops, the band splits and the team runs out in the field. So there's, this is Lover Stadium. Seats 10,440, but we average, for the last 11 years, we've averaged over 11,000 with a, with a single game record of 17,007. So when you get 17,007, all those, <laughs> that green area is all taken up. Uh, in every section and corridor here, and I imagine it gets pretty loud being oh, it does. down it, in this it, valley. It, it really does. So, so uh, probably about ten years ago, when we added the scoreboard, not quite ten years ago, there used to be a track that, that went around here where okay. the blue seats are. We dug down ten feet um, and took away the track, and then added in that that seating section there around the top part. So 
the actual playing surface used to be on top of that first seating section. Okay. That was the playing surface. We dug down 10 feet and uh, and then put in, got rid of the track, and it creates more of a, you know, more of an intimidating mm -hmm. uh, fan base So for the fans. Now, does it stay packed here even in the cold when it starts snowing? Well, it depends on the game. Yeah. It, it, it does, you know, uh, because of our success, a lot of times um, at halftime, the students will, if we're blowing a team out, they'll leave. We've tried to do a better job of trying to keep, keep them, them all in. keep them in and give incentivizing, um, you know, maybe some drawings or some giveaways in the third quarter. We have to be present though. So we, we try to do, you know, come up with gimmicks to, to keep them here. But, yeah. but for the most part, you know, uh, our, our, our football fans are, if it's a big game, they're going to, they're going to come out. And uh, we, we do a good job on, you know, with creating um, different, uh, uh, evenings like um, we have um, family day and homecoming and uh, we have tried to get as much community as possible to make sure that uh, that lover stadium is filled every every saturday well the stadium will be filled soon and you can watch all of the games right here on flow football